Marche Rocket, of course, being the part of it that he's had with SSW Entertainment. <laughs> Without a doubt. And with a leg drop like that, you're looking at one of the best in the business, brother. Oh, absolutely. And, of course, Marche Rocket being, uh, you know, on what I would say a very high priority to be an impact player in this region. Oh, without a doubt. But the real question is, is how big of an impact is he going to make in Kenosha Pro Wrestling? Oh, absolutely. And not to get into it too much, but I know at the last Kenosha Pro Wrestling event, he did make quite an impact. But we're not going to get into that at this point in time. At this point in time, we're going to debut my personal favorite segment, the Diamond Exchange. This is going to be a personal, intimate, one-on-one -on -one interview between myself and a contributor to SSW Entertainment, be it crew, wrestler, or anyone involved with the production of the show. And on this edition, I've chosen what I feel would be the most appropriate choice for the debut, would be my partner, RJ Daniels, whom you all know in front of the camera, but how much about him do you really know behind the camera? And of course, being that we are under time constraints here on SSW CyberSlam, and everybody that has seen you know shoot interviews with wrestlers know that sometimes they can be kind of long, drawn out, maybe sometimes even kind of boring. So what we're going to show you here on the truncated version of the Diamond Exchange on CyberSlam is just some of the most pertinent and important questions and answers that were given during that interview. So we're going to take a look here now at the Diamond Exchange. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Diamond Exchange. I am Devin Diamond, and I am joined today by my guest, RJ Daniels. How you doing, RJ? Very good, Devin. Thank you for having me on. Not a problem. Thank you for being here. Alright, well, we're going to start with a little Q&A, and then we're going to touch on a couple different topics here today. How did you get involved in professional wrestling? Obviously, being a wrestling fan from childhood was pretty much... You know, where it started and on the independent scene was pretty much based around our friendship and I know we've been friends we've been enemies but you and I <laughs> kind of kindred spirits in the pro wrestling world here and when you went to train with powerhouse pro wrestling is definitely where my interest because pretty much I up until that point in time I didn't even know there was really anything locally for professional wrestling and you opened my eyes to that and what's the first match that you've ever seen, real life or on television, that you can remember? Boy, my, my first thought that jumps at me is when my grandfather brought home WrestleMania 3 on a bootleg VHS tape from a <laughs> CCTV thing that he got from work. Um, and that hillbilly gym with the, the midgets. <laughs> little beaver. Yeah, hillbilly gym and the... Uh, the, the little midget guys taken on. I don't even remember who they took on, but for some reason that, that comes first to my mind. So I, I'll, I'll have to go with that one. I think that's probably my first match wrestling memory that I have. <laughs> so, What do you contribute to professional wrestling? I think as of right now, I have almost 10 years of experience in running events, but I think I have a very solid offering when it comes to the actual production. I see things like when we go into a place to set up the ring, where the ring needs to be, looking up, looking left, right, in every direction, yeah. where things should be, what problems could arise if this is here. It just, I, I think on show days, I have an overall good perspective of running an event. Okay. And production of the show and even the post production, because I think everybody has seen, you know, the videos and ads and flyers and all that type of stuff that I do. I, I think I'm just in general a good production okay. guy. So you and do you do all of that yourself? The advertise the making the flyers, the video production, pretty much it's all you it's all your ninety five percent of it is I just have to be You don't rely on other people to do that for you. Oh no. A anything that any shows that I've ever run in the past that have had SSW or affiliates of SSW on it I make the flyers, I make the DVDs, I make the YouTube videos, I run the Facebook page, the website, the other show. A few times we've had DJ Bob doing our audio, but yeah. nine times out of ten it's myself running the lights, the sound, all that type of stuff. It's, you know, I own the ring, 
Yeah. I'm not like other <laughs> places where I set up a wrestling event and then I go rent someone else's ring to do it. You can't have a wrestling show without a ring, and that was priority number one. Get yeah. a ring. I mean, ground up. Started with getting a wrestling ring. I guess that would probably be my biggest offering to the local scene would be the fact that <laughs> I, I, have own a ring. A, I have a wrestling ring. So <laughs> given that, I think there's only like three or four of them floating around the area, and there's about a dozen wrestling promotions, it says something. But no? anyways, no, I, yeah. Nothing wrong with having a ring. I think my, <laughs> to sum it up, is, is that with my experience, I know how to run a wrestling show. You know, how to put on an event and what to look for. Maybe not booking, and maybe not, you know, the... Uh, schmoozing that comes along with all the other aspects of it but when it comes down to the event I can pretty much guarantee you bar none I know what I'm doing. Why did you want to start SSW? Basically wanted to do something different. I know it's a tagline but essentially that really means what it means. I mean SSW came from looking around and my own personal, and I would say maybe somewhat delusional, being quite a bit younger and unexposed to the, you know, the independent scene in the area. I mean, to be honest with you, when, when SSW started, the only two things that I knew existed were Powerhouse and Mid-American. If there was a catalyst to starting SSW, which at that point in time was South Shore Wrestling um, over in Cudahy, mm -hmm. um, the catalyst probably, I would... I, I would give a 50-50 split to Powerhouse and what I saw, what they were doing, and Dinty Moore. And I know a lot of people are probably, oh, Dinty Moore, how did he have to do with that stuff? Matt Winchester, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the name. Yes, now known as Matt Winchester. Copyright. Um, it's not anything that I hold against him. As a matter of fact, I thank him for it. But there would be no SSW if it wasn't for Dinty Moore. And the reason being is... I wanted to learn how to be a wrestler. And when I kind of followed you up into Powerhouse, after you were done with your training, you kind of brought me in the ring one day to train. And I was in the ring bumping, people saw it, and then people decide to come into the ring and give their two cents or their chops or <laughs> what ends up being their forearms. Yeah. And I ended up in the corner with everybody wanting to take an opportunity to let me experience what chops were. So I don't remember who the two or three people that I took chops from, but I do remember Dinty Moore, if I'm not mistaken, was one of them. And then it progressed to, oh, let me show you what a forearm is like. No, that's not how I remember it. That's how I remember it, but let's bear in mind that it ended with me having my head pushed back and having a forearm slapped down onto my chest as, hard, corner, as, as hard, hard as it basically could be done. Yeah, I remember that. And... I, at that point in time, could not breathe, crumpled into a mess in the corner and rolled out of the ring and felt like I was having a heart attack, to be honest with you. Pretty much at that point in time, in my mind, I was like, I can't be a wrestler. And the reason for that was because my first thought was, if this happened to me in the middle of a match, there'd be no way I could finish. How could you perform for someone if you can't breathe? Well, you're not supposed to hurt somebody when you're performing. Yeah, and I know it happens, and I know people work through it. I mean, I'll give all, you know, guys blow their quads out in the middle of the ring and they finish a match. But at the same point in time, when you're talking about doing a hobby, not making millions of dollars and things like that. So, so, stuff like so that. basically by somebody taking liberties with you physically, it turned you off in the business. It didn't turn me off from the business, but it or turned me so off the from the physical aspect. The, the in-ring aspect of hmm. it. I think everything in life happens for a reason. Sometimes we just don't know why it is, mm. and maybe we'll never know why. But had that not happened, I think SSW never would have came into being because I may have become a wrestler, or I would have become a ref, and I'd maybe still be a ref. Or maybe I would have become a DJ and done what DJ Bob is doing. But I think you saw that that stuff was not right, and. Oh, Some actually, of the stuff that was going on in Powerhouse wasn't right, and we took that opportunity for me to say, hey, I want to I wanna be involved, but I don't want to be a wrestler. And you said, you want to be a wrestler, but you don't like what they're doing. So let's go do our own thing. Why has SSW evolved into a production company? There's so many wrestling promotions out there, and running our own events isn't exactly necessary. It's more so that I can 